Hello, Psychology of Learning students. Welcome to week three. In this week, we'll be covering the chapter three in the textbook, and this is going to cover classical conditioning. So the purpose of this short video, and I'm gonna start sharing the screen, is to go through classical conditioning like you learned about it when you were in general psychology. So we're just doing an overview to make sure that everyone remembers um, what classical conditioning is. Um, so uh, if you remember, we're gonna have an unconditioned stimulus that's going to lead to an unconditioned response. So the unconditioned stimulus we call the US, the unconditioned response is the UR. So this combination, this pairing, the organism is born with. Um, the, or the organism doesn't need to learn this. So here are some examples of some US UR combinations that are inborn in human beings and some other higher order animals. So you uh, blow a puff of air into someone's eye, they're gonna blink. You don't need to teach them that. The puff of air is the unconditioned stimulus, the blinking is the unconditioned response. You put meat or um, food on someone's tongue, they're gonna salivate. So the unconditioned stimulus is the food on the tongue, the unconditioned response is the salivating. If you have a really loud noise, like someone clapping or banging something very loud behind you when you can't see them, you're gonna become very startled and afraid. You might blink, your heart rate will increase, you're gonna have a fear response. So that's inborn, we don't have to teach that to you. If uh, you're heterosexual and you're exposed to um, uh, um, uh, a nude photo of someone of the opposite sex, you're gonna become aroused. Um, so there's lots of these unconditioned stimuli, unconditioned responses that are inbred, inborn into the organism. There are also a whole bunch of what we call neutral stimuli. So I've got NS down in the corner there. So the neutral stimuli are things that don't lead to uh, um, responses. So um, looking at flowers probably doesn't lead to any automatic response. Um, uh, there's lots of these. Uh, the sound of a bell probably doesn't lead to any unconditioned response. The sound of a metronome probably doesn't. Um, lots of different things. Looking at a picture of the letter X or the letter Y or the letter A, those, you're not born knowing to have some kind of a response to any of those. So they're neutral stimuli. They're stimuli that don't lead to a response. So it, what happens if we, whoops, if we take this neutral stimulus and we present it before the unconditioned stimulus? So, um, and we do this a number of times. But we're no longer going to call this a neutral stimulus. Now we're going to call it a conditioned stimulus. And if we present the conditioned stimulus, then the unconditioned stimulus, we're going to get the unconditioned response. If we do this enough times, CSUS, the animal responds. CSUS, the animal responds. CSUS, the animal responds. Eventually, the CS alone will get the organism to respond. When the organism responds to the um, conditioned stimulus, we call it a conditioned response, not an unconditioned response. Now let's do this with the famous example with Pavlov's dog. And um, like your book says that uh, it was a metronome, not a bell. And there's other books that will say different things, but I'm gonna use the bell since that's what you learned when you took general psychology. So if we put, what Pavlov knew is that if we put food um, on the dog's um, tongue, the dog would salivate. So the food is the unconditioned stimulus, the salivation is the unconditioned response. He didn't need to teach the dog to salivate to the food. You put food there, the dog's gonna salivate. There's a neutral stimulus for the dog is the sound of a metronome or a bell ringing. A dog isn't going to have a reaction to that. So what Pavlov did is he rang a bell, then gave the dog food, the, food, the dog salivated. He rang the bell, gave the dog food, the food salivated. Bell, food, salivate. Bell, food, salivate. Bell, food, salivate. After a number of these connections, when he gave the bell, rang the bell, the dog would salivate. No longer needed the food in there. The dog hears the bell, the dog salivates. 
And so when the dog is salivating to the bell, we call it the conditioned response. When the dog is salivating to the food, we call it the unconditioned response. And then of course the bell is the conditioned response. I'm sorry, the bell is the conditioned stimulus and the food is the unconditioned stimulus. Okay, let's go through another example here. This is one, um, I don't know, maybe I'm perverse in some way, but I find this hilarious. When I was a graduate student, I was told that one of the graduate students or several of the graduate students that worked for one of the famous people who studied classical conditioning, he took his graduate students who were heterosexual males and he showed them, uh, obviously if you're gonna show a heterosexual male a picture of a naked woman, um, he'll become aroused. So you've got the unconditioned stimulus of the naked woman and an unconditioned response of getting aroused. Now a neutral stimulus is showing the person a boot. So you know you show them a pair of Ugg boots, Ugg didn't exist back then, but a boot, what are they gonna happen? Nothing, maybe they, you know, uh, someone's, nothing's going to happen. So it's a neutral stimulus. But what this researcher did is he would show his graduate students who had volunteered to participate in this, a picture of a boot, then a picture of a naked woman, they became aroused. The boot, the woman, they became aroused. The boot, the nude woman became aroused. The boot, the nude woman, they became aroused. In no time at all, the men would look at the boot and become aroused. So when I was a graduate student, the joke was that these graduate students are now old and so are older. So if you went to a local Dillard's or um, Macy's and saw an older man just really having a good time looking at the boots, uh, they were probably one of the graduate students um, in this person's lab. We all got a big kick out of that. Okay, well, this gives you just, this was here to remind you about what classical conditioning is, sort of the basics. The next video, we're going to talk about higher order conditioning and some other things that you didn't learn about in general psychology. I hope this was helpful.